What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys Tor. Now this is a long overdue video. I've been meaning to do a video on Tor, which actually stands for the Onion Router. Because in the cybersecurity field, when you talk about hackers and uh, people that are actually trying to anonymize themselves online, then you can't have that conversation without talking about Tor. And so today I wanna do just that and give you guys actually a little bit of overview of how Tor actually works, as well as where you can get some information from. So the first thing I wanna do is go to the website for Tor and read a little bit about the project. So let's get to that now. Okay, so I'm at torproject.org. Basically, all you have to do is uh, search Google for a tour and you can bring up the project and this will give you a base overview of what tour is. And just to read a little bit about it, it says protect your privacy, uh, defend yourself against network surveillance and traffic an analysis. And a few of the things that it says it protects you from it, it basically says tour, prevents people from learning your location or browsing habits. Tor is for web browsers, instant messaging clients, and more. And then also it says Tor is free and open source. And that's one of the main reasons I wanted to cover Tor as well. It's an open source project. It's built by just regular people out there that work on this actual project and build on it and make it better. And just to read what is Tor, it says Tor is free software and an open network that helps you defend against traffic analysis, a form of network surveillance that threatens personal freedom and privacy, confidential businesses, activities, and relationships, and state security. And it says why anonymity matters. Uh, Tor protects you by bouncing your communications around a distributed network of relays run by volunteers all around the world. It prevents someone from watching your internet connection, from learning what websites you visit, and it prevents the sites you visit from learning your physical location. And then over here, it talks about who uses Tor. Uh, and it's a lot of different people that use Tor. I wanna hit on some of the main ones like uh, activists. It says activists use Tor to anonymously report abuse from danger zones. Uh, whistleblowers use Tor to safety report on corruption. For instance, one of the biggest cases that happened not that long ago was uh, the Snowden leaks. Well, he used Tor to actually leak and send the information over to the Guardian that was released on those government projects that were basically spying on American citizens. And he actually used Tor to release those documents anonymously so nobody can either even see the documents or intercept the communications and know where it came from. So that's one example of people in the real world actually using Tor. But Tor is how most people access the dark web or the deep web, well, the dark web. But anyway, it also states that media, uh, journalists, which that ties to the whole Snowden thing as well, uh, military and law enforcement, it says military and law enforcement use Tor to protect their communications, investigations, and intelligence. And here are all of the projects that are under Tor. They have the Tor browser. That's how you access the dark web. You have Orbit. This is an Android app that you can download that uses Tor. You can do all your searches and all that stuff. And then also Tails, which I'm going to do a review on pretty soon as well. Uh, I'll do a little bit of research on that and I'll do a review pretty soon. But Tails, you know, it's pre-configured to use Tor. Uh, and then Relay Search uh, is a site that provides an overview of the Tor network. Uh, pluggable transports and some of this stuff I don't know stem uh, library for writing scripts and applications that interact with tour and OONI global observatory monitoring for network censorship and then they have some other projects I want to click on them but that's pretty much it on the tour network or tour itself but I also wanted to click on the about tour and you guys can actually go through and read this. This will give you a little bit more information on how Tor actually works. 
and I also have a image that I want to pull up that'll actually show you how I can explain to you how traffic is sent over the tour network so you guys can get an understanding of it and it's explained in here more in depth and I just wanted to keep it at a you know a basic level so I'll share that now so this image right here kind of explains the tour network and I want you guys to actually see it so you can understand how it actually works uh, but you, basically you are the client and then when and what happens when you set up your connection uh, or when you open up the tour browser it creates these connections uh, and it connects to like three different nodes within the network and these nodes could be all over the world so you can have a node in Germany you can have a node in Pakistan you can have a node that hops in somewhere in the US or France so to speak and what happens is your tour browser actually creates encryption keys for each one of the nodes within the, the connection that you have uh, so it'll create a key with this this node which is considered your entry node uh, you have a middle relay uh, it'll create an encryption key with that one it'll create an encryption key with this one as well so the client encrypts it in three layers and what happens is when your data goes through each one of these nodes it strips off a layer of encryption because you have those encryption keys with each one of them so the first node you know it, it has that encryption on it and it'll remove the encryption from it and then this node it'll remove its encryption and then it's still basically gibberish because the previous node doesn't know what it is as well as this node doesn't know what it is once it removes the encryption and it just pushes it on to the next one in the chain and the one that will actually understand the message and where it needs to go to is the exit node because all the encryption layers will be stripped from the actual message and so it'll know where to send it it could be like a request to go to instagram or something or facebook or something and it'll send that to that server or request whatever image it could be whatever you know request that site and then once it gets right here you know it it gets the it gets the information from the actual server that you requested and then it goes through the opposite of the process so the information comes back to you and it goes to the exit node and it it encrypts it at this level and then it sends it on to this node and then it encrypts it a second time on top of it right here and then this node knows to send it to here and it will encrypt it again and then the entry node will send it back to you and your browser has all the keys to decrypt everything so it'll strip off the encryption of each one of these nodes once it gets back to this level or once it gets back to you because you own the encryption and that's essentially how it works that's kind of why i want to you know show this image so you guys can get a, a understanding of how to act, how it actually works next let, let's go back to the website and i just want to show you guys uh tour the actual browser so you can download tour and this will allow you to access the web and you can download it on windows mac and linux so go on and check this out for yourself you know what i'm saying this is like i said it prevents or protects you from tracking you know surveillance and censorship so so this is a great tool you want to learn how to protect yourself um and it's easy to install i didn't want to you know go through the install you can basically it's in most of the repositories for any linux linux distribution that you want to install it on uh like for instance ubuntu is sudo apt install uh tor browser or it might be tor dash browser uh i know an arch is tor dash browser as well so just check it out for yourself if you're interested in i don't know kind of getting on the dark web or because it's not all bad just watch where you go when you're on the network just just don't go to any place that you obviously know is not good which a lot of times you, you never know. So be careful what links you click on. And, and especially don't download anything when you're on it. Now, I don't go on there that often. I haven't been on there in years. Uh, so I might do a video on exploring the dark web just to see what it's like. 
uh, for 2021, you know, that might be a new video I could do, uh, just exploring the dark web because I'm, I'm very careful on what I click when I go through, go to different websites. So, um, I think I'll be pretty safe, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, and I definitely won't go to anything that's, uh, illegal. So, but at the end of the day, the tour network kind of has this bad rap, especially in like in the media and all that stuff. Basically, they associated with people that hack or people that sell illegal things. But it's not all about that. You know what I'm saying? It's mainly about keeping yourself anonymous and secure on the web and protecting yourself. Because a lot of these companies, they tend to track your every move that you, while you're browsing the web. Uh, like when you're logged into your Google account, every website you go to is kind of tracked. Everything you search in Google search is tracked and they have a copy of it on their server. So that's how, you know, you could go through and search for something in Google search. And then let's say you click on another tab and you open up Facebook and you'll start seeing what you searched on Google in Facebook because they share that information as well. So this is one way to protect yourself so i hope you guys check it out i didn't want to make this video too long um if you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up uh if you have any questions leave comments down in the comment boxes below and of course keep it tight